uh, relative to us or me creating my own experience, if a person has wanting, is wanting, and another person is wanting something different, and they're together, does, I mean, they're together, but they're wanting different things. How does, is there a negation? Of well, here's the thing. If you want something and you're in alignment with it, it's going to come. If the other wants something and they're in alignment with it, it's going to come. And the universe has an uncanny way of melding your intentions to give you both what you want, even though it seems impossible. In other words, someone might say, I want to live in the mountains, and someone living with them might say, I want to live on the shore. And it would seem that they both can't be satisfied, but when you get to the essence about what they're both reaching for, they want clean air, they want beautiful vistas, they want to feel good. The reason that one wants to live in the mountains and one wants to live at the ocean is for the same reason. And when they focus upon what they want, the universe will find a way to yielding to both of them what they want. But what trips you up sometimes is you know what you want and you focus upon it sometimes, but the other wants something different and you keep noticing what that other one wants. So you're not focused upon what you want. You're splitting your energy by pushing against what the other wants. So you're not a vibrational match to what you want and you're blaming the other one for it. And the other one's doing the same thing. Neither one of you are getting what you want and you're both blaming each other. So the answer to your question is, if you can stay focused upon what you want, which means you have to mind your own business and not push against someone else's different idea of what they want, you cannot stay true to what you want when you're pushing against what someone else wants. And the universe will yield to you. There are enough resources to give you all what you want. You are not in competition for resources, you see. So, Esther never stopped appreciating cats and dogs and all kinds of creatures. And every time she would see some little critter, she would say, Oh, hello, little cat. Would you like to come to Texas and live with me? And Jerry would say, No, I don't think so. Remember our agreement. And Esther would laugh and pet the cat and off it would go. And so one night they were in a campground in Louisiana. And while Jerry was hooking up the hoses and such, a little black and white cat came and rubbed on his ankles and Esther could hear sounds coming out of Jerry that were not familiar and she looked out <laughs> and she saw him having a nice relationship with this little cat who was insisting on getting his attention and doing it and then later Esther watched Jerry walking across the grass and she saw him going toward the park office and so she could tell something was up so she followed him where he did not see her and she listened through the window as she heard him ask the campground owner who does this cat belong to? And she said, we do not know. Someone dropped the cat off. We do not know uh, where it came from. And then Jerry came back to the coach, and Jerry and Esther are inside the coach. And that night at about 9 o'clock, someone is knocking on the door. Very unusual. They open the door, and here is the campground owner, and she is holding the cat. And she says to them, I've talked to my husband, and we think you should take this cat with you. <laughs> and Esther said... You have no idea how long this story is. <laughs> I cannot begin to tell you how unlikely that would be. But we will let you know in the morning. Thank you very much. And so now Esther is looking at Jerry and Jerry is looking at Esther. And neither one of them can sleep because Jerry is afraid Esther wants the cat and Esther is afraid he won't let her take it. And so Esther says to Jerry, I'll tell you what. When we wake up in the morning, if that little cat is nowhere around, we will just leave it at that. But if she is on our doorstep, we'll take that as a sign and we'll take her with us. And Jerry said, that sounds like a good plan. So they woke up before the sun came up and Esther is fixing breakfast and saying, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> And Jerry is saying, no, 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 that is not our deal. And then they put the window shades up and, and Jerry pulls in the hoses and Esther gets behind the wheel and starts the engine on this big diesel monster bus. And from across the distance, they see a little cat jumping through the tall grass. She is coming toward the coach. And she came right to the door of the coach. And Esther opened the door and Jerry said, well, little cat, I guess you're going to Texas. And in she came. And Elsie, which stands for Louisiana cat or lovable cat or Lake Charles, which is where she was found, 
is Jerry's best friend. <laughs> now, if you had asked Esther about the probability of that, she would have said, there is no possible way. Esther called the office and said to Yoli, we are bringing a cat. So if you could get some cat food and make a place for it. And Yoli told Tracy, they are bringing a cat. And Tracy said, oh, Yoli, I'm sure that's not right. <laughs> they saw a cat. They ran over a cat. <laughs> I know they are not bringing a cat. <laughs> Esther never pushed against Jerry's not wanting a cat. She just never stopped appreciating cats. She never stopped loving them and petting them and enjoying them wherever they were. In other words, she stayed true to her vibration of desire without introducing resistance. And when the time was just right, the universe orchestrated the perfect circumstances and events to give them both what they want. Mm -hmm. Jerry's resistance to a cat was he did not want the dependency. And this is a very independent cat. She lives outside. Of course, there are cat doors in every building that they own so that she can come and go as she pleases. But she is an outside cat. She could fend for herself. No one could be at the office for a month and she would do just fine and be there when they get back. Or she can live as she does most days with the girls at the office on Michelle's desk with her paw on the mouse pad. <laughs> That's great. I love it. <laughs>